There are invasive species in Puerto Rico and we're trying to control that problem. So we could start eating them and we can start hunting them. El grupo de los iguaneros de Aguada este, se dedica a defender la agricultura de Puerto Rico, lo poco que nos queda de la epidemia que tenemos de la iguana. Como hijo de agricultor, esto nos ha afectado. La iguana se come rápido las la, la plantas y no nos dejan cultivar. Nos afecta a todos porque con eso nosotros nos alimentamos. Nosotros estamos eliminando una plaga. We don't want this to become like a crazy war against the green iguanas. Uh, we're doing this because of a specific reason, but we should do it with dignity and, and we should have respect for the animal. Nosotros no lo consideramos como hobby. Los iguaneros de Aguada estamos brindando un servicio para que los agricultores no pierdan el fruto que cosechan. Estamos brindando nuestro servicio gratuito para ayudar a la economía de Puerto Rico. It's something very common in the rest of the world. If you have a problem with invasive, eat them. In terms of eating it, here in Puerto Rico at least, people don't like eating reptiles. One thing, it's for our culture, it's a little bit weird to start eating on reptiles and feeding on reptiles. Because if you go to Panama, Venezuela, Costa Rica, Colombia, it is part of the diet. People tend to eat it. Uh, there is a culture for that in Central and South America, but I think it's something that we could build upon here in Puerto Rico. We should uh, eat them locally, but also we should export them. My name is Roberto Hernandez. I'm the executive chef at Mio Restaurant in Washington, D.C., and today we're cooking iguanas. It smelled like fish. It felt like chicken in their hands, but it looked like red meat, so it's a completely different experience for me as a chef in the kitchen. And all the things that you can do with, with the iguana and all the different flavors you can develop, I think it's, it's a pretty good item in a menu. Iguanas, for one thing, it's, it's very well known, it's very well documented that iguanas are a very good source of protein. Very lean, it's very high in protein, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very low fat meat. Iguana can be prepared, fried, stewed, we can do iguana popcorn, grill it, uh, roast it. It's all about the imagination of whoever is doing it. This iguana meat we're going to eat today, it, come, it comes from Canovanas, Puerto Rico. It has all the FDA licenses and all the permits it needs to be exporting the, this item. If I didn't know of iguana, I probably wouldn't have been so skittish. But I'm trying it and I actually really like it. And for me, it had more of a consistency of pork. No, but it's nice that you can have, you know, these different kind of textures in the same kind of meat. So it really gives it different flavors. The stew was very good. Fantastic. This was a great experience. It was beyond what I ever thought it would be. The meat itself was really, really tender, which I didn't expect at all. The popcorn chicken is delicious. I mean, it's not chicken, actually. It's um, iguana. I really like it. And uh, if I can go for seconds, I'll... <laughs> We need to go through the proper channels to, to make it into an industry in Puerto Rico. The major problem and the reason why the Department of Health hasn't approved it is salmonella. The same thing happens with chicken eggs and chicken meat and turkey meat. So that's something that if you have a series of regulations to keep the meat nice and healthy, I don't see any problem, why not? If you never had iguana before, give it a chance and grab a bite. <laughs>